The following events were recorded as they happened at the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto. On this episode of Life's Little Miracles, Matthew suffers from a rare heart condition. Nathaniel's day on the ski slopes ends in the ER. Spencer undergoes a massive craniofacial reconstruction. And Braden faces surgery to remove cancer in his leg. It was a very emotional time, like, I mean, finding out you know, that your, that your little one has cancer. It's something that uh, really hit us hard. Eleven-month-old Braden was diagnosed with a cancer tumor in the muscle of his right leg when he was just six months old. Thank you. You're welcome. After enduring four rounds of chemotherapy, Braden is being prepared for surgery to remove the tumor. Oh, you're an entertainer, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Good for you. I got the phone call, I remember, um, about 9 in the morning, 9.30 in the morning, and just disbelief. I think it was a 10-minute conversation, and he had called it infantile fibrosarcoma, and I didn't understand what he meant, and we went on to talk for about 10 minutes, and and then finally he used the word tumor, and it kind of dropped me to my dropped me to the floor, and but since then he's he's handled things really well, so we've gotten all our strength from him. I mean, once we were told it was um, it was a very emotional time. Like, I mean, finding out. You know, that your, that your little one has cancer. It's something that uh, really hit us hard. Hello. Hi, how, how are you doing? How are you? I know it's been a while since we, we've talked last. Uh, and I know you've been, we had, you had the biopsy and you've been getting chemotherapy. Yeah. And I'm really happy with the way that the MRIs are looking because okay. the size of the tumor has really shrunk incredibly. Okay. So the, the area where there still is some abnormal this abnormal tissue in the MRI scans is really inside the back part of the muscles okay. in, in the calf area. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll have an incision along the back part of the leg. We'll go into that area and we're going to take out all the abnormal looking tissue on the MRI along with some of the muscle. Okay. And what we do is we do a type of op a resection or type of removal of tumor called a wide resection. And what we try to do is we try to, to never actually see the tumor itself but only to see the normal tissue around it. Okay. If you do operate through the tumor, actually through the tumor tissue itself, uh, you can actually can spread some of the tumor cells locally in the area we're operating on. And not cells you see, but like you could microscopic cells, right. which theoretically could go around the circulation if it implant into the area where we do the surgery or circulate and wind up in other places. So it's not as good a way to remove all the tumor tissue as doing this wide, wide excision. Even though we're gonna take this tumor out, this really isn't a uh, complete guarantee that it's going to be a cure. Okay. But again, with the chemotherapy working so well for these kind of tumors, I, the, the results are really, really very good. So I'm, okay. I'm really excited and hopeful that this okay. is going to be able to be a cure, but I can't give a guarantee that it's ne never yeah. going to come back again. Right. Okay, I'll see you later. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thank you very okay. much. Braden's surgery and his chance to be cancer free for the first time in his life is just a week away. Three hours ago, 10-year-old Nathaniel was enjoying his first time on skis. The fun ended when he fell off the ski lift. He can snowboard well, and I've seen him snowboard before, but I kept saying to him, skiing is totally different, because I wiped out the first time. So I guess he's just like, just like mom, <laughs> wiping out. So, Nathaniel, can you tell me why you're here today? When I was going up the lift, um, I, I slipped when I was on the thing. Um, my legs went my legs went back and I hit my head on the back. Oh, I see. Okay. And where does it hurt? It hurts right here in my leg. In your leg. So where your hand is there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Were you able to uh, ski at all afterwards, after you got no, off the lift? No. no. No, they had to take me on a toboggan to get to the thing. They had to take you. Oh, I see. That, that was, was that fun? Mm, kind of. Kind of, eh? <laughs> you preferred to be skiing down the hill, not mm -hmm. tobogganing down. All right, so have you walked since this happened? Um, no. You haven't, okay. Um, Mum, how's his health in general? He's pretty healthy. Okay, good, Nathaniel. So, let's examine you here. 
Okay, Nathaniel. So first thing is I'm going to check your hips, okay? So I'm touching here. Does it hurt on this side? No? And what about on this side? Ouch. What about when I touch on the inside of your knee? Ouch. Hurts there. What about on the outside of your knee? Hurts. Hurts. Hurts there too. Now what I'm going to ask you to do is to uh, bend your knee for me. Ouch. Where does that hurt when you do it? It hurts in the knee. Okay. All right, Nathaniel and Mom, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do an x-ray of your knee. Okay. You're also tender up in your hip area when I touch too, eh? So, um, so that's why we're going to do an x-ray of both, okay? All right. Thank you very much. Sorry. <laughs> Mom. Mommy's, mommy's crying. Nathaniel's knee and hip will be x-rayed to look for signs of fractures. And I want you to put a little bend in your sore one. A broken bone will land Nathaniel in a cast. Try to hold Okay. Seven-year-old Spencer has come to the hospital for a craniofacial appointment. Spencer's skull has not developed normally, and he is being prepared for a nine-hour reconstructive surgery in which the bones of his face will be cut from cheek to cheek and moved forward into a better position. The hope of this procedure is to address his, um, his, his craniofacial structure, to give him uh, a more normalized appearance, but also to address issues with breathing, because Spencer has obstructive sleep apnea. So when he sleeps at nighttime, his soft tissue collapse and he actually stops breathing for fairly lengthy periods of time throughout the night. Um, so hopefully by opening up the air passages, that's going to address that issue. Okay, we're going to go into this room with the puppies on the door. Before surgery goes ahead, Spencer must be examined to ensure he is healthy enough to endure such a huge operation. Good for you. Lift all the way up. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, nice deep breaths. Can we do that together? Okay. okay, Spencer, nice and slow. Okay, look at me. Look at me. Oh, good stuff. And again. For that. Okay. One last time. Oh, you're awesome. Thank you. Okay, see, off for me. And again. Good. Touch your chin all the way down there. Let me see. No, no, no. With with your chin. Like this. Like this. Look all the way down. Okay, look all the way up. Up to the sky. Up, 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 up. Excellent. Okay, look over towards your mom. Towards your mom? All the way over. Excellent. Over here. Other side. Oh, you're fast. Okay. <laughs> Do me another favor. Do this. Okay, look at me now. Spence, look at me. Okay, go like this. You need to shrug your shoulders? No, just relax. Shrug your shoulders. Put it down. Put it up again. Push up. Oh, you're so strong. You are so strong. So the morning of surgery, you'll be coming up with Spencer, and is your husband coming with him as well, yes. too? Yes. Okay, yeah. All right. And so you'll be coming maybe up. Maybe my brothers. And maybe no. your brothers? No, your brothers are going to, they're going to be somewhere else, honey. Yeah, How many brothers do you have, Spencer? Two. You have two. Older or younger? Younger, both younger. Both younger. How old are they? Uh, one is one, <laughs> and one is five. Ah, and what's your names? Uh, Benjamin and Cole. Benjamin and Cole. Oh, okay. Okay, Spencer, guess what? We're actually pretty much done. Okay. Can we visit the barbecue? Spencer so we'll will return for his operation in one Where's week. Okay, that's surgical waiting room. It's the morning of Braden's cancer surgery. His parents have a final meeting with his surgeon. Hello, hi, how are you doing? <laughs> Good morning. Not here. too bad. How are you doing? So you all set for this? Um, first thing I'm going to do is make some marks over here. And here. <laughs> okay. I just need one of you to sign permission for the surgery. Okay. And this just says that <laughs> it's going to get a right calf tumor resection. And I'm going to go put on green clothes like everybody else has on. And then I'll see him probably about half an hour or so. Okay. okay. I'll see him just, I'll see him in just a little bit then. Okay. okay. All right. All set. It's time for Braden to be taken to the operating room for his anesthetic. Big hugs, big kisses over here. 
Sending their first child into the operating room is very difficult for Braden's parents. But this surgery is Braden's best hope for a future without cancer. It's been one hour since Braden's parents sent him into the operating room. Surgery to remove his cancer tumor is about to begin. So we're going to make an incision that's going to go about like this, in this area. And we're going to use the information from the MRI scan, which is on the TV monitor in the corner, to determine where we're going to do our soft tissue operation so that we take out a cuff of normal tissue around where the tumor is and don't actually see the tumor tissue itself. So when you do tumor surgery, one of the other things is you really want to cut back on bleeding because if there is any contamination from tumor's tissue, it, the tumor cells can go anywhere where the bleeding is. Nathaniel's x-ray results are ready. Well, I took another look at his x-rays and that area of concern that I was thinking about a fracture we're taking a second look at it, I'm putting less doubt on the fact that it is a fracture. Okay. It is over the area where he is tender. That hurts there, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's one of these x-rays where there's no obvious fracture that I'm seeing. Okay. Uh, and, and kids often can have fractures through the growth plate, and the x-rays frankly look normal. So the bottom line is, I, I am concerned about a, a fracture in okay. him, in, in his knee, and we're gonna put him in a, a special type of a splint calf. Okay. Okay. We're gonna put this on the foot first. So, Nathaniel, was this your first time skiing, or have you skied before? Never skied before, first this time. your first time, eh? Mm -hmm. I've snowboarded before. You've snowboarded before? Mm-hmm. Oh, usually most people ski before they snowboard. Mm -hmm. The other way around, eh? Okay, actually, Mama, I'm going to need your help here, if you don't mind. Okay. Very good. So you can slip your gloves off now. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to position that. Okay, good. Okay, Nathaniel? Huh? How do you feel? I look good. It's hard to move. It's hard to move? Uh huh. Yeah. That's the whole idea. So um, we'll let that dry and then I'll come and set you with, up with some crutches. In, um, in a few minutes, and then you'll be uh, all set to head home, okay? All right. After just one day, Nathaniel's ski season is over. Braden's parents wait for news from the operating room. His surgeon prepares to remove the cancer tumor. Yeah. What we have is the tumor is inside this muscle, and we're just going to take it now, at all, all the abnormal areas. We're going to take, actually only seeing the normal tissue, and inside there somewhere is where the tumor is, and we're going to not see the tumor, but take all of, we're going to take a, what's called a wide excision of the normal tissue around it. So all you want to see is normal muscle on the tumor section that looks all like nice normal muscle. Nothing looks abnormal, so that's good news. Okay. So I want you to feel inside here. You can feel some small nodules, especially in this area right over here. Can you feel them? Yeah. That's probably the residual tumor deep inside, none here in the patient. Fresh. Yeah, it goes up. It's fresh, but not for frozen. 
Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. There you go. Everything went absolutely fine. No, no problems at all. Uh, he did great. Uh, we were able to take the whole, I think the whole tumor out, we only saw normal tissues. We didn't see any tumor tissue anywhere, which is what we had planned to do. And it'll take a couple days to find out if... Yeah, the pathology will take a while. I know that Dr. Malkin talked about only a couple days. It usually takes a little bit longer because okay. it's a big, it's a, we took, you know, we do, the way you do the surgery is we try not to see any tumor, we take normal tissue right. around it. And it winds up being, um, no, not fairly, but it's a large enough section of tissue they have to actually section through and look through all the different okay. spots of it. And it actually just is a lot of sections to look through, so okay. it's a lot of work for Comparable, me to do. Comparable, how big is what was removed? Like it's about what we saw. It would, it was about an area about maybe four centimeters in length by about two centimeters in diameter. Okay. So it's pretty much just what we had talked about doing okay. before. Okay. Wonderful. We'll see you Thank later. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very Bye -bye. much. Brayden is very strong coming out of surgery. The next few days will be difficult for his parents as they wait for the pathology report that could assure them Brayden's cancer is gone. Let's go, big guy. It's the morning of Spencer's all day craniofacial reconstruction. Sending a child into the operating room is hard on most families. They go well with your samples, though, I must say. Spencer's mother will stay with him until he's asleep. These few toes. Those go up front. Uh, ugly. Yeah. Well, what can I say, hon? Are you ready? Yep. What are you ready for, Spencer? Surgery. Good stuff. And this guy's going to be in your sleep the whole time. Oh, am I going to hold on to Hug the whole time? Just He's going to be beside you. With you, yeah, I think. Along with yeah, your blanket. I'm just going to hug like this. Yeah. And there you go. That's going to keep you cozy. You All righty, okay. you ready? Spencer, come here, big guy. Saying goodbye to Spencer will be particularly tough. The surgery will cause so much swelling around his airway that he is not expected to be able to breathe on his own for at least a week and will remain on life support the entire time. Okay, see you, Spence. Okay. Spencer. Okay. Your head's gonna come this side. Am I doing that? Okay. That's one down. Do you mind? Can you try a little bit? It's very tasty. No? Do you lie down? Are you going to lie on your back? That's great. And we have and a nice warm over. blanket there. Woo! That is fantastic. That, You're the okay. smiliest person ever. Okay, Mum's right here. So she's going to hold this hand. Excellent. That's very good. Blow it away, Spence. Blow it away. Big pops. That's fantastic. You clever boy. So basically what uh, the problem Spencer has is that his upper jaw, his cheekbones are sitting too far back relative to his skull and his mandible. And that's why when you look at his occlusal, his jaw is in the right position, but his occlusal relationship is like that. So what we're gonna do today is to make cuts in the bone that go through this area, the frontal zygomatic suture, through the floor of the orbit, up behind where the upper and lower eyelids meet, across the base of the nose, down through the other orbit, and again through the frontal zygomatic area. We then cut across the zygomatic arches. So what ends up happening is we've separated this whole central portion of the face and are able to bring it forward for him. And what that does is not only will normalize his uh, 
ascetic relationship of his face, but will also increase the airway because as the upper jaw moves forward, the nasal pharyngeal airway will expand, which will really help him in terms of his breathing. Spencer is now anesthetized, and his surgery can begin. Number 10 blade, two single hooks. Spencer's scalp will be cut from ear to ear to expose his skull. Skin hook, please. His surgeon will then spend the next five hours sawing through bone from cheek to cheek so his mid face can be moved forward into a better position. The anesthetist stands by ready to transfuse Spencer in case he begins to bleed out of control. It's been five hours since seven-year-old Spencer was taken into the OR for a reconstruction of the bones in his face. His surgeon has cut his skull from cheek to cheek and will now attempt to move the lower half forward into its new position. that if anything he's got a reverse relationship that his chin looks further back than his, his upper jaw. And you can see the occlusions change to, to the same degree that now the upper is further forward. So that worked really well. I think that's gonna be a really nice change for him. Thank you, people. Hi, he's fine. <laughs> Things are great. Okay, that's more worried about. I think you're gonna see a change right away. How much advancement did you get? About 24, 25 millimeters. So just what we wanted. That's like an inch. So obviously you're very happy with the way things went. Yeah, went. No, I think you're it's really great. Satisfied. I, want, I want you to see that. It's up to you. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Seeing a child's appearance radically changed is a nerve-wracking experience. even if the change is ultimately a positive one. One day after his tumor was removed, Braden recovers on the orthopedic unit. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Looking pretty good. <laughs> how's, he, how's he been doing? Good. He had a really good night. Great. Yep. Okay, can you see those feet in here? Up there you go. It's all wrapped up. Just all five toes. Looks good. <laughs> Everything looks really good. Uh, you know, it'll take a, like I said, it'll take a little while to get the pathology back. Uh, probably won't be back till after, after you, you're home. And so once either we, we get the results, either Dr. Malkin or myself, probably Dr. Malkin will call you up and tell you if you need any other kind of treatment from his standpoint. Okay. okay. We'll see you later. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Got some good news. Twenty-four hours after surgery, Spencer remains in the critical care unit. Post-operative swelling around his airway means he cannot breathe on his own. Yeah, it was a bit of a shock to see him, because he looks very different. I mean, with the swelling and then the change because of the surgery, he looks so different. So that was, that was tough, because I was expecting him to look more like Spencer than what he did. They're talking about extubation on Monday, so almost a week. 
It could be difficult for Spencer to resist the urge to remove the breathing tube as he becomes more alert over the next week. But until his swelling subsides, Spencer cannot get enough oxygen into his lungs without life support. It's been three days since Spencer's surgery. He is now awake and continues to need life support to maintain his oxygen level. Hi, Spence. Dr. Phillips is here. How are you here. doing, Spencer? Dr. Phillips. I'm just going to touch you gently, OK? I'll be really careful. He tries to open his eyes. I would think within the next 48 hours that'll be the case. He can open them a little bit. The only discomfort he says he has is his, the tube in his nose right. and sort of down in his throat. But uh, it's, uh, you know, I guess it's sort of like a sore throat or something. Yeah. So he's right on schedule. As we mentioned, that usually between the third and fifth day, you'll start seeing the swelling go down just like it's come up. Um, and today's day three, so he's right on schedule. Yeah, it's really a lot better than yesterday. Yesterday okay. was, That's you great. couldn't see his nose. I mean, it was just. So I talked to Alan, and uh, what we'll do is arrange on Tuesday or Wednesday to take the breathing tube okay. out. Okay, okay. Um, and I'll give you a better idea over the weekend. Okay, which day? Okay. Um, yeah, I think he's doing great. Still got a bit of a fever, so they're checking for infection. But as long as you see the swelling going down, you know that everything is fine here. Okay. okay? Okay. All right. We'll Good. see you a little later today again. Okay. Thanks. Okay, big guy. Hey, you want to get up, don't you? Yeah. Spencer will have to be patient. Post-operative swelling will keep him on a breathing tube for at least four more days. Okay. You don't looking great there, big guy. Twelve-year-old Matthew Wouters has been diagnosed with Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, a rare cardiac condition. Right in nice and close to your chest is actually touching it. His heart has an extra electrical circuit that can cause it to beat out of control. Just watch that. And I need to wrap your arms around nice and tight. Hang on there. If untreated, Matthew could suffer a heart attack before he's out of his teens. Okay, Matthew, big breath in and hold it. Good, and breathe. I was um, playing baseball and I was on the first base and then after I started running I started getting really dizzy and I saw black. I was actually on the sidelines and I looked over at Matthew and he was like this and I said what's wrong and he says everything's black I can't see and then he said my chest hurts. When I touched him at the time his pulse it was really bounding and he was cold and clammy all over and you know beads of sweat and so I called the doctor and got him in thank goodness he's without BCG we never would have known that he has WPW. He was on the cross-country team he ran cross-country for the last couple of years so he wasn't allowed to be in the cross-country team this year and he found that a little bit devastating that he couldn't do that I want to be a normal kid and do normal things. OK, come on, Matthew. Come pop down from the bed. Give your mom a hug. Can I walk to the door? Absolutely. Matthew's parents accompany him to the catheterization lab, where doctors will attempt to destroy the extra electrical circuit that causes his heart to beat out of control. While Matthew is anesthetized, his doctor reviews the procedure. Uh, we use a long uh, catheter or, or, or tube that has an electrical uh, uh, electrode at the end of it, and that electrode can be used to deliver either hot or cold energy, uh, depending on the catheter that we choose, and either freeze or burn the pathway, and that's how we'll get rid of this tachycardia. And I'll take a second perking uh, wire. Now that Matthew is asleep, his heart repair gets underway. And go in just beside the pulse into the vein. 
The team begins by inserting a catheter into a vein in his leg that will travel up into his heart. Just two days after a cancer tumor was removed from his leg, Braden is ready to go home. Hey bud, can you guys rest your beads? His parents have brought him a special gift. That's lots of beads. For everything he's had during the whole ordeal, he's gotten a bead. He's gotten them for his MRIs and his chemo treatments and blood work, and he just collect them on a string, and they call them bravery beads, so very well named. He's got a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> Getting tired. Braden will return to the oncology clinic as soon as pathology results on his tumor are available. Getting tired? Don't worry, we want to get you home. <laughs> Yay! That's yes. right. Going home. His family can only hope he won't need any more bravery beads. Twelve-year-old Matthew's heart repair has been underway in the catheterization lab for three hours. Doctors have pinpointed the location of the extra electrical circuit that causes his heart to beat out of control. They now insert the catheter, equipped with a hot tip, to burn just enough tissue to destroy the circuit. Okay, that's a nice balance. That looks better. The extra circuit has been successfully destroyed. The catheters will be removed, and Matthew's procedure will be complete. There you go. Hi. We haven't met, right? No, no. no. Still gross. <laughs> nice to meet you. Hi again. Hi, uh, nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Yeah. Everything's fine. Matthew's fine. We had no no problems in the sense that, you know, as far as I know, he's okay. He's still anesthetized, so until he's, you know, fully awake, uh, we won't be 100% sure, but as far as we know, during the procedure, there were no problems, no issues, no complications. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, he'll have an ECG, just a standard, old-fashioned, mm -hmm. you know, ECG, and that'll tell us, that will hopefully confirm for us that the pattern of what's called pre-excitation, the WPW pattern, is gone from his ECG. All right, thank you so much. Okay, you it's a pleasure. Thank you. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Sure. It's a pleasure. Okay. All right. Eight days after surgery, Spencer's swelling should have subsided, and Spencer should be ready to breathe on his own. But doctors cannot know for certain until the tube is out, so the procedure will be done in an operating room where the tube can be quickly reinserted if necessary. So just like we talked about yesterday, we'll keep him as awake as possible. We'll just suction out the back of the, of the throat to get out any secretions. And then we'll just snip that suture, loosen up the tapes, and we'll take the tube out. It's time for Spencer to be taken to the operating room. Okay, guys, this is the door. Okay, okay goodbye, big guy. Yep. Okay, big guy. Hey, okay. we'll see you in a little bit, okay? We'll see you hose free. That's our plan. Okay. All right, guys, thank you. Okay. See you soon. Off, Spencer. Taking the tape. Now, Spencer, remember you're going to be taking deep breaths, okay? All right? You're going to be taking that tube out soon. You're doing really well. Good boy. Yeah, that's a good boy. Good boy. Okay? There we go. 
Good boy. Spencer's breathing tube is now out. Okay. I know. Just gonna take some rain, getting used to this now. Good boy. Spencer, just concentrate on taking some deep breaths. Okay. Good deep breath. Deep breath again. Doctors soon determine Spencer cannot breathe on his own. They make the decision to put the breathing tube back in and try again in a few days. All right. Oh, Spencer, you're doing so well. You were so brave. You were so, so brave. And you know what? Your mom and dad are going to be very proud of you. They're going to be a bit disappointed that the tube's still in, but they'll be very proud of you. Here we go. We got 22. It's now been 12 days since Spencer's surgery. Hi, hon. For the last three days, he's been given steroids to help reduce his swelling. Once again, doctors hope Spencer is ready to breathe on his own and will attempt to remove his breathing tube. Hi, Spencer. He's really scared, and I know we're not allowed to be in there. Is there, like, can somebody just hold his hand? Like, can oh, Donna absolutely. go in and hold his hand or something? Is Donna available to go yeah, in? Yeah, I can come in. That's not a problem. That's fine by me. Sure. Do you, you want Donna to come in with you and hold your hand while we're doing this? Because Mommy and Daddy okay. were just not allowed to be in there, honey. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we would go. Sounds good. Spencer, you remember me? Well, that might be a good thing, actually. <laughs> All right. My name is Jengis from Anesthesia. Now, my, our job is to take you over into that operating room, OK? And we're going to get you sitting up. And taking nice deep breaths, and then we're going to loosen up those tapes that are around your nose and around your face. And we're going to take that tube out, the breathing tube out. Okay? And you've got the most important job. Your job is to take nice deep, deep breaths, and if you feel anything down in your throat that needs to come out, you just cough them out. Okay? And we're all hoping and wishing and expecting oh, that it'll, the tube will stay out this time. That's good like that, Lori. Thank you. Is that okay? <laughs> okay, everyone? Spencer, I'm going to disconnect this. There we go. Okay. Spencer, out comes a tube, okay? Yucky feeling. Yucky feeling, yucky, yucky, yucky. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Good boy. Good. Deep breath. Does that feel better now that's gone? Good. Is that better? Oh, wow. Oh, that's right. Wow. Mm -hmm. You can all that up. Do you know how proud your parents are going to be of you? Oh, I was just thinking about this. this so. wow. They have a huge they're going to be so happy. Great. I think it's time to call recovery room and get them over there. No. No. Are you okay? You look scared. Are you still scared a little bit? No. Oh. Glad that's over with. Hey, yeah. you glad that's over? Yeah. I heard you were a real trooper. As soon as they took the dudes out, Dr. Phillips came out and told us right away that you did fantastic. Yeah, you should be so proud of yourself there, big guy. Yeah. Hey, big guy. Now you had the ablation done yesterday. One day after Matthew's heart repair, an electrocardiogram records his heart rhythms. Of course, this would be when my paper runs out. So there it is. There you go. Heart number one. <laughs> now, do you understand all that? <laughs> it says no. Good morning. His doctor delivers the results. How are you, Matthew? Good. Do you know Dr. Bronzetti? And you know me, right? It hasn't been too long from last time. Good. Have you been eating? Yeah, I just finished eating breakfast. Yeah? Was it good? Yeah. Do you want to stay here? 
Um, you've had all your tests this morning, and it looks like the procedure was successful. I think we got rid of the problem that you, <laughs> <laughs> that you came in Isn't with. Isn't that awesome? So that's, that's it. That's what you wanted. So I think you're all set to go home. Oh, that's wonderful news. But it looks like it's totally gone. Thank looks like it's totally gone, yeah. <laughs> Thank right. you very much, Dr. Take Lewis. care. Thank you. All right, we'll see you guys soon. Nice to see you. Have again. a great Thanks. Christmas. Yeah, you too. No 12-year-old should have to worry about the threat of a heart attack. Come on, Dutch. <laughs> Whoa. And now that Matthew has had his heart repaired, it's no longer a worry for him. <laughs> The concern is gone and he's just back to his normal self and you can tell we're all a lot more relaxed in the family and very happy. <laughs> Do you want to go for a run? Should I have this? Okay. Oi! Come on, kids, let's go! And life is back to normal for Nathaniel who has fully recovered from his skiing accident and is no longer in a cast. He's so happy to be back playing hockey. If he could, he would have taken the cast off himself. Are you having fun? Mm -hmm. So how's your leg now? Feeling a lot better, right? Yeah. So your friends are glad to see you, mm -hmm. aren't they? Mm -hmm. I think that your side needs your help. Mm -hmm. You better go help them. <laughs> I think skiing will be out of the question until next year. Although he, he still wants to go, so I guess if I try again, <laughs> we'll probably break something else next year. Two weeks after his craniofacial surgery, Spencer is ready for discharge. Today we're going to go home. We've been discharged, which is a great feeling. So, um, yeah, we're going home and we're going to just kind of relax. And I don't really know what I want to do at home. What do you want to do at home? Video game. Video game. Um, but overall, we're feeling really excited about going home. Yeah, just really looking forward to getting back to a state of normalcy. Two months after his surgery, life is back to normal for Spencer and his brothers. And despite the roller coaster recovery, he and his family couldn't be happier with the results of his surgery. One week after Braden's cancer tumor was removed, his parents returned to the hospital for pathology results. Oh. Yeah, how's your bravery beads? Hmm? Hmm? Hello. Hello, Hello you. You're waving at me. That's a good sign. Hi, Braden. How are you? Look at his bravery beads. I know. Anyway, to get to the uh, thing you're waiting for. So the tumor is gone. Um, basically, there's nothing left of it. And uh, there's no no living cancer cells whatsoever. It's completely dead. Hey, bud. Hooray. You won. <laughs> yeah. Cross yeah. the finish line. Oh. Wonderful. Bye-bye. Oh, thank you. Oh, very welcome. Very welcome. <laughs> I think there's a smile on it. <laughs> yeah, we're happy. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come here. Braden is now 14 months old and has fully recovered from his surgery. You're funny. And hopefully, Braden has been freed from cancer for the rest of his life. <laughs>